Lovely. Well, good morning and thanks a million for joining me on the yoga mat this morning. This week's focus is on those lovely lower limbs. Um, so really anything from the hip line all the way down to the tip of the big toe. And we're going to include the hips there because if we do have any little imbalances, instabilities within the hip complex, chances are we're going to find them down into the legs as well. And often the lower body and, and the rest of the body, it works in a little kind of zigzag compensatory pattern. So if we have a, an issue in the right hip, we might be compensating into the left knee and then therefore into that right ankle. So that right hip, right ankle, left hip, left ankle has a very strong relationship. So if you find that you do have a weakness in say the ankle, maybe not just look at the ankle, look at the hip in tandem with it. So we'll be addressing this a little bit more in the class this morning. So I'm just gonna invite you to come to a nice, easy cross-legged seat, sitting as comfortable as you can in the spine. We'll relax the shoulders back, lengthening tall through the crown of the head. And we tuck the chin a little bit to release into the back of the neck. And just notice if we're holding the breath. See if we can draw it a little bit deeper down into the body. Softly in and out through the nose. And on the exhale, just allow the body soften a little bit more. We're going to inhale, press the chest all the way over to the right, bring it through center all the way over to the left. And as we exhale, tuck the chin, we're going to round into that upper back and continue with your O breath. Nice full circular movements, nice deep bend into the elbows. Maybe rolling into the shoulder joints, maybe even rolling into head and neck if it feels good. Allow the head and neck go freely. Again, only if it feels good. Relax the breath. Feel free to side out if it feels good. And as we press the chest forward, see if we can fold a little bit deeper and really work into the glute. So feel that release. We'll feel it a little bit more on one side, more than the other, depending on which way those legs are crossed. Softening again with each exhale, a little bit softer. And we're going to meet back at center. We'll reverse the crisscross. Again, palms are rested. We'll inhale, press the chest to the left, draw it through center all the way over to the right. And as we exhale, tuck the chin and round. Continue with your own breath and just enjoy the movement for what it is. Again, there's no real right or wrong. We're just trying to create as much movement space, energy into the joints, into that lower back in particular, but the whole length of the spine. And just notice how that feels in the opposite hip. Listening to the body, listening to the little clicks, the pops, the clunks. And then we'll meet back in seat at center. We're going to open the palms to the ceiling, relaxing into the shoulders. And then inhale both arms, out reaching up. Interlock fingers, press palms to ceiling. As we exhale, press the palms forward and really stretch between those shoulder blades. And we'll do that two more times. So a nice big stretch. And release. <sighs> Last one, arms right back in line with the ears. And then a lovely big stretch between those shoulder blades. Lovely. Straight away, we're going to come up onto the knees. And if the knees are feeling a wee bit crunchy this morning, you can place a towel or a cushion and just place the knees onto that just to take the pressure, particularly if you're on a hard surface. Knees are about hip width distance apart. We're going to tuck the toes under. Arms are by the sides, palms are open. We'll inhale both arms out, reaching up. And as we exhale, gently twist to the right. We're going to place that right hand to either the back of the left leg, or if we can touch the fingertips to the heel, but not if we're falling too far back. So keep pressing those hips forward. We're gonna reach that left arm all the way back overhead, looking over that right shoulder. So as we inhale, reach through that left arm. And as we exhale, see if we can press those hips a little bit further forward as we gently twist to the right. So this is just a gentle twist. If we're feeling pressure in the lower back, see if we can draw the belly button in. Inhale, stretch. Exhale, twist. We're going to inhale, gently fall back and then bring that right arm back up to meet left. And as we exhale, bring those hands to heart. I'm actually going to get my towel here as I speak. My knee's still a little bit tender <laughs> from a fall a few weeks ago. And sometimes I do forget. So again, make the pose as comfortable as you can. Palms by the sides. We'll inhale both arms out, reaching up. And as we exhale, gently twist to the left, 
Placing the left hand either to the back of the right thigh or touching the fingertips to the heel, but make sure we can keep pressing those hips forward. We're going to inhale, reach that right arm back overhead. And as we exhale, gently twist, look at over the left shoulder. Using that left hand as a little lever to draw ourselves a wee bit deeper into the twist. No pressure in the lower back, keep drawing the belly button in. And if we're still feeling it, bring that left hand up to either the back of the leg or even up to the hip. Inhale, stretch. Exhale, twist. Inhale, gently sit back. And then we're going to bring that left hand back. And then exhale, hands to heart. I'm going to turn to the side here so you can see what I'm doing. So again, same starting position. We want to maintain a nice straight line from the ear to the shoulder, to the hip, to the knee. So we're not allowing that bump pop out back. Hands to heart. Toes tucked under. And then we're going to gently send our bodies back, keeping that straight line, starting to feel this into the knees and into the quads. Nice, strong core engagement. And then exhale, come all the way back up really slowly. So inhale, gently reclining back. As far as we can go, getting a nice little stretch into the feet here. Exhale, bring it forward really slowly. Continue with your own breath. So again, we're fighting that urge to sit back onto the heels. I want you to keep that lovely straight line. And when you start to collapse, just bring the body forward. And maybe each time we get a little bit further back. So this is a lovely core connection, but it's also a really nice way of working into those quads and hamstrings. Nice little stretch. And then we're going to meet back up at center. Excellent. And then we're going to sit back onto the heels. And for some, this could be really easy, depending on where the flexion is in those feet. And we're just going to pause here, sending the weight into the heels. Relax the shoulders. And then gently bring those hands out in front. We're going to untuck the toes and sit all the way back onto the heels. And again, depending on that ankle flexion, this might be a little bit easier. And again, just breathing, just using body weight here to stretch into the feet and ankles. Inhale, bring the arms out in front, tuck the toes under as we exhale, sit back toward the heels. Inhale, bring the hands out in front, on top the toes, sit all the way back. Lovely. So from here, we're going to keep the knees together. We're just going to bring those feet a little bit further out from the body. So the knees are together and we can peel the calf muscles out a little bit. Now, if we have a block, we can use it. We can sit on our block or we can sit on a little cushion if we're quite off the floor here. So option. We're trying to bring those sit bones as close to the ground or as close to the block as we can, but keep those knees together. So again, nice little stretch into the quads, into the ankles here. And again, we can stay here. This might be more than enough. If we feel like we wish to go a little bit deeper, we're going to walk those hands behind us. Fingertips point forward. Coming back as far as feels good. A little softness to the elbows here. We might even come down onto the forearms, but don't force it. And again, notice if we're feeling pressure in that lower back. Keep drawing the belly button in. We're not going to come any further than this unless you've been practicing. Opening into the heart, drawing the shoulder blades together. Again, notice if those knees are splaying away from each other, see if we can draw them back together. Pressing the knees to the ground, pressing the hips to the ceiling. We're just gonna pause here, feeling that stretch into the front of the body, into the quads. Nice full belly breaths for three. For two. And one. Tuck the chin, we're going to send the weight to the right. Left hand comes to the ground, right hand comes to meet it. And then slowly coming all the way back up. And again, we're going to bring those knees and feet together. Okay. Again, just allowing ourselves reset here. We're going to bring the hands to the ground, either side of the hips. And depending on the arm length, those hands can be anywhere in this area. Again, if you find if the arms are a little bit short, you can always place your hands onto blocks or stack books, otherwise coming up onto the finger pads. When you're ready, we're going to press the feet into the ground and see if we can lift the knees ever so slightly. If that feels good, we might lift them a little bit further, but again, don't force it. So we're just going to pause here, stretching into the front of the feet, into the toes, 
into tibialis here for three, for two, and one, gently release, sending the body weight forward, tuck the toes under, and we're just gonna gently rock the body forward and back, working into those wrists and forearms here too. So again, just a little counter movement. Sitting all the way back, we'll untuck the toes and sit all the way back to the heels. We're going to do that one more time. So again, finger pads to the ground. We do not have to lift the knees if, the, if it doesn't feel good on the body. Just see. We're going to press the hands into the ground, finger pads into the ground. Gently lift. If that feels good, gently lift a little bit more. And if that feels good, we lift all the way up. Feeling that stretch. Holding it here, but not the breath. For three. For two. And one, gently release. Hands come out in front. We're going to send the body forward, tuck the toes under, and again, just gently rock forward and back. As far forward as we can go. So we're really getting a nice little stretch into those wrists, into those forearms. And again, it's just a little counter pose for those ankles and feet. And then on top of the toes, we're going to sit all the way back, coming over onto our right hand side. And then we will bring that left leg at front. We're going to come into a nice, easy cross legged. So I'll turn to face you this time. Lovely. And we're going to pick the right foot up. We're going to use our left hand and see, we're going to see how those toe spacings are. We're going to see if we can get each finger in between each toe. So a little bit of foot mobility here. So that's what we're aiming for. If we can get a couple of fingers in, that's great too. <laughs> and we're just going to hold it here. We're just going to make a few little circles. We can use that right hand to lift the foot. Again, we're not going too deep. We've got a little bit of space into the hips here, but the focus here is on that foot and ankle. And we're creating nice, big circular movements, both into the toes, but also working a few circles into the ankle. And we can reverse and be kind, not too rough here. We can even create a little bit of traction by pulling those toes, feeling that little bit of space into the joints. So an area that we do tend to neglect. And when you think of the amount of time we spend on our feet every day, so again, just take a little bit of time here this morning. We're going to point, really stretch into the front of the ankles, and then we flex, pressing those toes all the way back. And again, you could spend a lot more time doing this than what we're going to do here. Maybe in the evening, if you're sitting down, you could just be sitting on the couch, butt on your lap, and just working into these lovely little movements. Brilliant. So while we're here, Left hand still on the foot, right hand on the knee. We'll make a few little mobilizations into that right hip. So again, trying to keep the hips nice and mobile so we can free up any little bits of tightnesses within there that might be affecting those lower legs. Nice and easy. And then meeting back at center. Options here, we can either come into easy cross-legged or we can rest that right ankle on top of the left knee. We can let go of the foot. Right knee on top of the left ankle, coming into our log pose. And again, adjust the sit bones, get nice and comfortable here, wherever we are. Left hand is just above the knee. We're gonna inhale the right arm up. And as we exhale, gently twist to the right, we place the hand on the ground behind us, close to the lower back. As we inhale, press the right hand into the ground, lengthen tall. As we exhale, gently twist, look it over the right shoulder. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, twist. One more breath. And then inhale, gently back to center, little twist to the left just to release. And then back to center again. We can stay here or inhale both arms out reaching up. And as we exhale, gently folding over that right leg, hands are rested to the ground. We're going to press the ground away, see if we can draw those sit bones back a little bit further. Relax the head, relax the neck. Feel that release into the posterior chain of the body. 
We're going to inhale, lengthen through the spine. And as we exhale, see if you can sink and fold a little bit deeper. Feel free to rock into the hips, create as much space as we can as we fold, drawing the belly in, head and neck fully relaxed. Maybe give the head a little shake to remind it to relax. Creeping those fingertips forward for three, for two, and one, gently tuck the chin, slowly walk the hands back toward the body. One last little one for the foot here. So either in our log pose or our easy cross-legged. We're just going to get both thumbs and we're going to literally spread the tissue from the midline of the foot all the way out. We're going to work up and down. So this is just a little bit of self-massage. So we're just looking after those feet this morning and go as deep as feels good, noticing how the fascia feels into the arches of the feet, noticing if we can spread those toes a little bit further. So even thinking about how much time our poor little feet spend squished up in shoes, just see if we can give them a little bit of space to breathe here this morning. And again, if we can look after our foundations, we can really make massive differences into what's happening in the rest of the body. Maybe a few little thumb glides up and down. So again, just gently massaging, noticing any little crunchy parts and maybe working a little bit deeper into them. And again, this is something that you can do a lot more of in your own time when you have that time, but definitely taking that extra few minutes a day or even a week just to create that little bit of space. Lovely. We're going to work into the other side. So again, we'll pick that left foot up, we're going to place the fingers between the toes as much as we can. And again, if you don't have them already, toe spacers, little silicone toe spacers can be a really nice way of doing this without you having to hold your foot. <laughs> and again, a really nice recovery too. Again, we can use that left hand, just hook it under, just so we can lift the foot enough that we can get those little circles. And again, we're working into the foot, but we're also getting a nice little rotation into the ankle here. Don't be afraid to bring those toes right back. Maybe creating a little bit of traction as we pull the toes out of the joints. And we can reverse those circles. Just noticing how it feels compared to the other side. And we'll feel this into the lower leg muscles, not just the ankle and the foot. As those circles get a little bit larger. Stretching into the arches, into the fronts of the toes. And then we can point again, really stretching into the front of the ankle and flex, drawing those toes right back. And again, just working with your own breath here. So working a little bit of dorsiflexion, a little bit of plantar flexion. And again, this can affect, if we don't have that dorsiflexion, if we don't have that plantar flexion, this really affects how we move, how we walk, how we run. So again, just trying to increase that natural range of motion. We're not looking for hypermobility here, but we do want that nice range. Okay, lovely. Again, we'll keep hold of that foot, left hand is on the knee, and we'll just do a few, little rotations into that left hip nice and slow if we don't feel we've enough support with those fingers in between the toes you can hold on to that left foot make the pose as comfortable and as accessible as you can and again just notice how that left hip feels this morning relax the breath softening into the body and then eventually meeting back at centre. So again, option either to come into easy cross-legged with the left foot out front or log pose with that left ankle stacked on top of the right, left knee stacked on top of the right ankle. So opposite foot, opposite knee. And again, just notice if that left knee is way up in the air, I'd probably encourage you to come back into easy cross-legged until you have a little bit more space in that hip so that your log pose is a lot more comfortable. Right hand just above the knee. We'll inhale the left arm up. And as we exhale, gently twist to the left, we're going to place the left hand on the ground behind us. Right hand presses into that leg. As we inhale, sit tall. And as we exhale, gently twist. Looking over the left shoulder, drawing the belly button in, bringing that hand nice and close to the lower back. So we're still engaging with that lovely strong core, shoulders away from the ears, nice full belly breath. Lengthening on the inhale, twisting, releasing, opening on the exhale. We'll take one more breath. 
And then inhale gently back through center, little twist to the right, just to release. And then back to center again. Again, we can stay here, just grinding those sit bones. If we want to go further, we'll inhale both arms out, reaching up. And as we exhale, gently fold forward, reaching through those fingertips as far as we can go. And then rest the hands wherever they land, pressing the ground. We're really shifting those sit bones back. Relax the head, relax the neck, relax the breath. Pressing the finger pads into the brain, maybe walking those fingertips out a little bit further. Every inhale, we're lengthening through the spine and every exhale, we're folding toward the ground. Even just noticing as we took the chin, what effect that has on the whole posterior chain of the body. It's micro movements. Relax the breath, relax the head. Drawing the belly in, creating a little bit more space for that fold to happen, more and more breath. And then jelly tuck the chin, we'll slowly walk the hands back toward the body. And again, while we're here, a little self massage, so either from log pose or easy cross legged, we're going to get both thumbs. And we're going to start in the midline of the foot, and we're just going to Peel the fascia away from the midline. Up and down the foot from the ball all the way to the heel. And just notice if we've got any little tender points along that line. So again, just taking the time to really work into that area. See if we can spread the toes a little bit more. And again, just notice how it feels. So a little bit of toe yoga. <laughs> but really just self-care, looking after those foundations that carry us. Again, doing a few little thumb glides, maybe from the heel to the ball of the foot, see how that feels. And again, just noticing any little crunchy bits and maybe working a little bit deeper into them. And you can revisit this later yourself. If you did find those crunchy bits, you think you'd like to work on that a wee bit more. So again, don't be afraid to delve right in. Excellent, lovely. We're going to bring the left foot out in front. We'll bring the right foot out to meet it. We'll bring those hands behind us, fingertips point back. Pressing into the ground, opening into the heart. We're going to inhale here, feet are wide. As we exhale, drop the knees to the right as we look over the left shoulder. Inhale back through center, exhale, knees drop to the left as we look over the right shoulder and continue here with your own breath. Nice and slowly, making sure those feet are wide enough apart that the opposite knee has falling space behind the opposite foot. And we're pressing those knees all the way to the ground or as close as we can get them. So we're mobilizing into the inner outer hip, but we're also getting a wee bit into the ITV here as well. Maybe a little bit into the quads. And then we'll meet back at center. Bringing the knees and feet together, we're going to come to lie back onto our mats. Just make sure that you do have your strap and your block there within reach. So lying slowly back onto the ground. Keeping the left knee bent, we'll hug the right knee in. And then we're going to interlock the fingers around the back of the hamstring. We're going to inhale straight the right leg up toward the ceiling, drawing those toes toward the face. Pausing here, pressing that lower back into the ground. See if we can lift the leg a little bit more. Noticing where we're feeling that in the hamstring. So it should just be the belly of the muscle, not behind the kneecap and not up near the sit bone. If we're feeling it there, soften the knee a little bit or drop the heel. We're going to inhale, hug the right knee into the chest. And as we exhale, straighten that right leg up. Continue here with your own breath. Feel free to point the toes inward or outward. So we're working a little bit of mobility into that ankle, a little stretch into the lower leg. And if you want a little bit more space in the hips, you can always straighten that left leg down, but just make sure we can press the back of the leg into the ground. So we actually are getting that hip release and we're still stable in that lower back. Lovely. 
Hugging that right knee into the chest. We're gonna, if we're wearing leggings, if we're not, it's okay. We're gonna roll our leggings till they're just below the knee. And we're gonna do again, a little bit of self massage. We might bend that left knee again, just to stabilize that lower back. Um, we're gonna work into the tibialis here to the right side of the shin bone. So we're gonna start by pointing the toes. Sorry, we're going to start by flexing the toes. So draw the toe toward the knee. We're going to get our index and our middle finger. And we're going to literally pull that muscle. So the muscle just to the right of the shin, away from the ankle. And as we exhale, we're going to point through the toes. So we're going to inhale, flex, pulling the muscle away from the ankle, and then exhale, point. And we're going to work the whole way along that muscle. So really digging the fingers in, locking them in, pulling the muscle away. So we should feel the stretch between the ankle and where those fingers are placed. So we're working the whole way up the muscle. So this is soft tissue release or STR, a little self massage technique. And it can be really nice if those lower leg muscles feel particularly tight or niggly. And the stretch just feels like a little bit too much. Or maybe we want to see where that little tightness is coming from. So often it's not the whole muscle. We could have a little trigger point along that muscle. And we can do this into all the lower leg muscles. I'm just doing this one. You can do calf, glaze, all the way up to just below the knee. So we're not pressing into the actual knee. And then we just do a few little glides up and down the muscle to get that blood flow going again. Lovely, and then we can pull that leg in down. We're gonna rest that right foot down. We're gonna hug the left knee in. Again, interlock the fingers around the back of the hamstring. We're gonna straighten that left leg up toward the ceiling, drawing the toes toward the face. And again, just notice where that's at comparing to the other side. Lower back is placed to the ground. We're gonna inhale, draw the left knee in. And as we exhale, straighten the foot. Keep drawing those toes toward the face, actively into that lower leg. Continue with your own breath. Again, we can point the feet inward and outward, working a little bit of inversion, eversion into those ankles. And as we point inward and outward, we're going to feel that into the knee and the hip as well. So a little bit of rotation. But keep drawing that toe toward the knee. So we're really looking at that lower, lower leg. And again, if you want to work a wee bit more into your hip space, Continuing the movement with a straightened leg, but keep pressing the back of that leg into the ground, feeling that space across the front of the pelvis and make sure that lower back feels nice and stable. Relax the bra, relax the shoulders. Easy, easy. And then coming to rest again, we can bend the right knee, flatten it out, roll the leg up if we're wearing them just so we've got skin on skin contact here. Again, we'll start with a flexed foot. So drawing the toe toward the knee, getting the index and middle finger. We're gonna pull that muscle away from the ankle joint. So again, we're working that muscle to the left side of the shin bone. From the base, we'll inhale here and as we exhale, point the toes. Inhale, flex the foot, pulling the muscle away from the ankle. Exhale, point. Continue all the way up. So we're moving about a centimeter at a time. And just really tuning into how that muscle feels. Don't be afraid to put a little bit of extra pressure. So we're working with our own pressure here. So we're not going to go too deep. But I do want you to feel that stretch. And while we're near the ankle, we mightn't feel that stretch at all too much. But as we work up through the muscle, we might feel it a little bit more. And again, depending on where any of those tightnesses might be, and maybe they're not there at all. And this is just a nice little mobilization. And again, while you're doing this, you can always point the toes inward and outward and notice how that feels in the muscle. So even that change of direction. So all the way to just below the knee, and then we just glide the finger pads up and down the muscle, getting a wee bit of blood flow stimulation back into those muscle fibers. Excellent. And then we can relax, pulling the leg and down, resting the left foot down to meet right. We're going to hug both knees in toward the chest, 
crisscross of the ankles, options to make your way anywhere to seat, or you can rock and roll with me just the once. We're going to bring ourselves into a nice strong seat at the front of the mat. We bring those hands forward out in front, gently shift the body width forward, stepping back onto the knees, finding ourselves in a lovely strong tabletop, centered in the middle of our mat. Shoulders over, elbows over us, elbow creases face forward. We're going to tuck the toes under this morning and again, cushion those knees if you need. Inhale, take the gaze up as we arch the spine. Exhale, press into the ground, curl through the spine, take the gaze back toward the belly. Inhale, gaze goes forward and up, arching the spine. Exhale, press into the ground, curl through the spine, tip the chin to the chest and continue with your own breath. Noticing those elbows, so the elbow creases are facing forward, they're not collapsing out to the side. So we're nice and strong in those arms and shoulders as we press the ground away. Keeping the hips nice and high for this one. And just feeling that space, the whole length of the spine. Mobilizing into the core of the spine, the whole torso of the body here. Relax the breath, feel free to sigh it out if it feels good. And close down the eyes if it feels good. Just really engaging with the movement. Exaggerate the movement. We're going to meet in our tabletop. And then from here, we're going to make start to draw nice big circles with the hips. So we're going to inhale all the way over to the right, sit back toward the heels, all the way over to the left. And as we exhale, bring the body weight forward into those wrists, get a nice little stretch and continue with your own breath. Pressing the ground away, maybe rolling into the head, the neck, the shoulders, trying to make those circles a little bit larger, stretching into the side waist. Next time we sit back to the right, we're going to pause here, really pressing the ground away to the left and sending that right hip to the right, holding it for three, for two, and one, sitting all the way back over to the left, pressing the ground away to the right, sending that left sit bone back for three, for two, and one, slowly coming back to front, and we're going to reverse those circles opposite direction. And again, just allowing ourselves to get lost in the movement, cushion those knees if you need, and tuck the toes if you need. So again, making it as comfortable as you can, as flowy as you can, just really getting into the movement here. Rolling into the shoulders, the elbows, stretching into the side waist. Next time we sit back toward the heels, we're going to pause here. We're going to walk the hands forward, melting the forehead to the ground or to a block if it's not quite there. And just taking a little breather here in our child's pose. Bending those sit bones back, feeling that space into the hips. Toes can be tucked or untucked. As we press the ground away, see if we can draw the chest a little bit closer toward the mat. Just feel that space. Lovely. We're going to gently send the body weight forward. Toes are tucked under. We're going to press the hands and feet into the ground, looking back. We're going to lift the knees and lift those hips as high as we can toward the ceiling, coming into our downward dog. Pressing the ground away, see if you can draw the chest a little bit closer toward the mat, lowering those heels to the ground as far as you can go. And then we'll gently paddle out the feet. Opposite heels melting softly toward the ground. Using that movement to try to massage into the full length of the foot. So really pressing those heels down. Once we're not recovering from any recent tears of the Achilles or calves, really pressing those heels down. Otherwise, just a nice gentle walk it out. Relax the head, relax the neck, relax the breath. Looking forward between the hands, we'll walk our way to the front of the mat. Coming to a nice easy forward fold. So Nice softness to the knees here. We'll bend, resting the belly onto the legs and then holding on to opposite elbows, allowing the head and neck fully relax. As we inhale, see if we can straighten the legs ever so slightly, but maintain that connection belly to legs. And as we exhale, fold. So we're inhaling, lifting. And we're exhaling, folding. One more. Release the fingertips to the ground. We'll tuck the chin in, slowly rolling our way all the way up to stand. Head comes up last, nice and easy. 
you can take a little drink here if you wish. If we're if we have a block, we can place it toward the front edge of the mat. We should be okay for our strap and our tie. And when you're ready, meeting at the front of the mat, feet nicely grounded, about hip width distance apart. Again, really spreading through those toes, trying to really create a nice large foundation. Hands come to heart, relax the shoulders, finding a point out in front to focus your gaze. Drawing the belly in, relax the breath, relax the shoulders. We're going to inhale high up onto the balls of the feet, lifting from the heels, just aiming for stillness here. Again, the softer, the more unstable our surfaces, the more challenging this will be. If you need to make it easier, we're coming to a hard surface. So if you need to step off the mat. Again, just relaxing into that space, strengthening into those lower legs, into those feet. Feeling that into the arches, into the ankles, and then gently release. Inhale high up onto the balls of the feet. We can stay here, or if you want to challenge it, we can soften the knees and gently sit back into a little quarter chair. Knees are pointed forward. We're not leaning forward. We're not leaning back. Nice centered gravity, sitting nice and low, feeling that now into the quads, maybe holding it for three. For two and one, inhale all the way back up and then exhale, release. Arms are by the sides, palms are open to the front of the room. If you wish, you can always do this beside a chair or a table just so you have an extra little bit of a little crutch just in case we fall out of our balance. Find that drishti point, that point out in front to focus your gaze. We're going to inhale. Lift the right knee out in front, bring the hands to heart. Staying here, if that feels good, we'll rest the right ankle just above or just below the knee. Pressing that right knee back. Nice and long, nice and tall in the spine. If that feels good, we might sink the body weight into a little quarter chair. And again, just until we feel it into the lower leg. So this is a really nice stretch into Achilles calf. Nice for our dorsiflexion, sitting here for three for two and one inhale all the way back up we'll bring that right knee out in front as we exhale soften the left knee we're going to step back into a nice high lunge really pressing back through the right heel we'll inhale both arms out reaching up palms together interlock all fingers bar the index and thumb and just send those arms back overhead drawing the belly button in feeling that lovely release into the right hip for three for two and one, slowly sending the body weight forward, nice straight spine here, holding it here, nice and long, belly off the legs, drawing the belly in for three, for two and one, hands frame the left foot, right hand stays on the ground, we'll inhale the left arm up and open the heart. Exhale, left hand back to the ground. Dropping right heel down, engage the core up into our warrior. Extend the arms, palms face down. We're gonna sink into that left knee, left knee, left foot point forward. Left heel bisects the arch of the back foot. Relax the shoulders. Following the left middle finger with the gaze, we're gonna inhale, straighten the left leg, arms together overhead, look up. Exhale, bend the left knee. Warrior, two more. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, lunge. Nice and controlled, last one. Inhale, straighten the left leg as we exhale, reach those fingertips as far forward as we can go. Then bring the back of the hand to the inner leg. Extend the right arm up, taking the gaze up for three. Opening the heart for two. And one, inhale the right arm all the way overhead. And as we exhale, bring the right hand down to meet left. Inhale, both arms together, all the way back up. Exhale, bend the left knee, open the arms, warrior. Cartwheeling both hands down either side of the left foot, coming onto the ball of the right. We'll soften the right knee to the ground. Again, cushion it if you need. We'll inhale both arms, out reaching up, palms together. Exhale, hands to heart. Opening those arms into cactus, drawing the shoulders together, drawing the belly in as we sink into the hips. Find a point out in front to focus our gaze. We're going to inhale, straighten the left leg, draw the toes toward the face, touch the fingertips down. 
Exhale, bend the left knee, open the arms, cactus lunge. Inhale, lengthen forward. If you need blocks, you can place the hands to the blocks or books. Exhale, bend the left knee, cactus. Three more. Really press on that left heel into the ground. So we're keeping those hamstrings active, even as we sit back toward that right heel. Two more. Gaze is focused out in front. So we're keeping that lovely space into the heart, into the front of the body. Last one. Meeting in our cactus lunge, we're going to frame the left foot. Coming off the right knee, we'll shift the body weight forward to lift the right foot up to meet left. And then exhale, fold. Inhale, rolling up through center. Hands extended up, palms together. Exhale, hands to heart. Second side, feet nicely grounded. Hip width distance apart, arms by the sides, palms are forward. Right foot is rooted. Find our foundation. Gaze is out in front. Relax the shoulders, relax the breath, drawing the belly in. We're going to inhale, lift the left knee out in front, bringing those hands to heart. Stay here, finding stillness, making sure those hips are level. That feels good. We'll rest the left ankle just above or just below the knee, working that left knee back. So we're really feeling that into the front of the pelvis. If that feels good, if the ankle is above the knee, we can soften the right knee and sit just a little bit back into a quarter chair. Starting to feel that into the lower leg, Achilles, calf. Relax the shoulders. Again, we're not leaning too far forward, too far back, holding it for three. For two. And one, inhale, straighten the leg. We'll bring the left knee out in front. And as we exhale, soften the right knee, we're going to step all the way back into our high lunge. Find our stability, find our balance, pressing back through the left heel as we bend into the right knee. We'll inhale both arms out, reaching up, palms together. Interlock all fingers except the index and thumb. And then send those fingers to the ceiling and slightly behind, drawing the belly in. So slight little back bend, but keep drawing the belly in so we're not putting pressure into that lower back for three. Pressing back through the heel for two. And one, staying here, gently sending the body weight forward, keeping those arms back in line with the ears. Nice straight line from the heel to those fingertips for three. Strong in that front leg for two. And one, both hands come to the ground. Left hand stays there. We're going to inhale the right arm up and open the heart. Exhale, right hand back to the ground. Dropping left heel down, engage the core up into our warrior. Extend the arms, palms, face down, softening into that right knee. Relax the shoulders. We're going to follow the right middle finger with the gaze. Inhale, straighten the right leg, arms together overhead, look up. Exhale, bend the right knee, warrior lunge, three more. Keep drawing those inner thighs strongly toward each other, pressing both feet firmly into the ground, really rooting our foundation, two more. Lengthening on the inhale, deepening on the exhale. We're going to inhale straight in the right leg. And as we exhale, reach those fingertips as far forward as we can go. Bring the back of the hand to the inner leg. Extend that left arm up, really reaching through the fingers, taking the gaze up, opening into the heart for three, for two. And one, inhale the left arm all the way overhead. Reach, and as we exhale, bring the left hand down to meet the right. Inhale, both arms together all the way back up. And as we exhale, bend the right knee, open the arms, warrior. Cartwheeling both hands down, either side of the foot, coming all to the ball of the left, resting the left knee down, cushion it if you need. We'll inhale both arms out, reaching up, palms together. Exhale, hands to heart as we sink into the hips, but notice if we're putting pressure in the lower back, keep drawing that belly button in, opening the arms into our cactus, drawing those shoulder blades together, opening into that heart. We're going to inhale, straighten the right leg, draw the toes toward the face, touch the fingertips down. Exhale, bend the left knee, open the arms, cactus lunge. Continue with your own breath. Gaze is forward. We're pressing that right heel into the ground protecting that right hamstring by engaging. 
Inhale, four. Exhale, cactus lunge. Last one. Meeting in our cactus lunge, we're going to frame the right foot coming off the left knee. We'll shift the body weight forward to place the left foot up to meet right and then exhale fold. Inhale, rolling up to center, hands extended up, palms together. Exhale, hands to heart. Take a little drink if you need. And again, if you need to locate yourself near a wall or a chair for the next one, we're going to work a little bit into our dancer pose just to get a nice little stretch into the hips and quads here. So meeting at the front, feet are together, knees are together, arms are by the sides. We bring the left hand to the hip. We're going to bend the right knee, draw the heel toward the bum, keep the knees together if we can. And then we're going to try to catch hold of the inside arch of that foot. So the wrist is actually facing outward. So inside arch, keeping the body forward. This might be enough, pressing the foot into the hand till we start to feel a nice little stretch into that right hip and quad. We might go a little bit further by bringing that right knee away, but keeping it to the center line. So we're not splitting that right knee out to the side, pressing the foot into the hand as we lift. We might bring that left hand out in front, looking toward the left thumb. Oh, we can't lift any further. We might hinge the body weight forward, lifting that back foot. So again, remember, you can catch hold onto a table, wall, chair, and just really work into that lovely stretch over the balance, holding it for three, lifting for two, and one. Inhale, knees back together. We're going to lift that right knee out in front. And as we exhale, soften the left knee, we'll step back on to the ball of the foot. Inhale, both arms out, reaching up, palms together, interlock all fingers, bar index and thumb, sending those hands back overhead, pressing forward into the hips, pressing back through the right heel for three. For two, and one, sending the body weight forward, nice straight line from the fingertips to that right heel for three. Strong in the left leg for two, and one, framing the foot, right hand stays on the ground. We'll inhale the left arm up and open. Exhale, left hand back to the ground, dropping right heel down, engage the core up into our warrior, sinking into those hips, looking toward the left middle finger. We're gonna inhale, straighten the left leg, arms together overhead, look up. Exhale, bend the left knee, warrior. Two more, inhale, lengthen and rise. Exhale, warrior lunge. Last one, keep checking in that left knee is pointed forward and not collapsing. Meeting in our warrior, we're gonna inhale, straighten the left leg. As we exhale, reach the fingertips forward, bring the back of the hand to the inner leg, extend the right arm up, looking up. Make it our body as narrow as we can. Notice that the bum's popped out behind. See if we can press those hips forward for three. Reaching through the fingertips for two. And one, we're going to inhale the right arm all the way overhead. And as we exhale, bring the right hand down to meet left. Inhale, both arms together, all the way back up. Exhale, bend the left knee, open the arms, warrior. Can't really both hands down either side of the left foot, coming on to the ball of the right. Knee on or off the ground, your choice. We're going to inhale both arms out, reaching up, palms together. Exhale, hands to heart as we sink into the hips. We're going to release that right knee softly to the ground. Opening the arms into cactus. Inhale, straighten the left leg, draw the toes toward the face. We're going to pause here. Sending the weight back toward the right heel. And again, notice if we ground it, we can bring those hands up onto blocks, up onto stacked books, whatever it is, we're just drawing that toe toward the knee. If it feels good, we can fold a little bit deeper over that left leg. And again, if we're stretching into our hamstring, it's just the center belly, the muscle we're feeling it. Keep drawing the toes toward the face, holding it. Relax the head, relax the neck for three. For two. And one, gently walk with those hands to the front of the mat. And then opening into our cactus, we're going to pause here. Sending the hips to the ground, drawing the belly in, drawing the shoulder blades together for three, for two, and one. Framing that left foot, coming off the right knee. We're going to shift the body weight forward to lift the right foot up to meet left 
and then exhale, fold. Inhale, rolling up through center, hands extended up, palms together. Exhale, hands down. Opposite side, starting at the front of the mat. Feet are together, knees are together. Arms are by the sides, shoulders relax. We bring that right hand to the hip to start with. Keeping the knees together, we're going to bend the left knee, draw the heel toward the bum. We're going to catch hold of the inner arch of that left foot. So again, the wrist is pointing outward. Keep that left shoulder pointed forward, those hips are forward. So we're not rotating to the left here. Body is forward. Pressing the foot into the hand, see if we can draw the heel away from the bum and then see if we can draw that knee away. Again, backward as opposed to outward, lifting, lifting, lifting as far as we can go. Maybe bring that right arm out in front, looking toward the right thumb, lifting a little bit more and then sending that body weight forward. Pressing the foot into the hand wherever we are. And again, if we want to forget about the balance, just work into that stretch. Feel free to hold on to anything within reach and just really enjoy that space into the left hip and quad for three. Lifting for two. And one inhale, knees back together. We're going to lift that left knee out in front. And as we exhale, soften the right knee, we'll step back into our high lunge. Inhale, both arms together. Palms together, interlock the fingers, except in neck and thumb. We're going to send those fingers behind, framing the ears with those arms, bending into the right knee, drawing the belly in, pressing back through the left heel for three. Active through that left leg for two. And one sending body weight four. Try not to collapse onto that right leg. Nice straight line. Active through the left heel for three. Reaching through fingers for two. And one, we're going to rest the hands to the ground. Left hand stays there. We'll inhale the right arm up and open the heart. Exhale, right hand back to the ground, dropping left heel down, engage the core. Warrior. Extend the arms, palms face down, softening into the right knee. Right knee, right foot point forward, following the right middle finger. We're going to inhale, straighten the right leg, arms together overhead, look up. Exhale, bend the right knee. Warrior. Two more. Inhale, lengthen and rise. Exhale, warrior. Last one. Nice and strong. Meeting in our warrior. We're going to inhale, straighten the right leg. As we exhale, reach the fingertips as far forward as we can go. Then bring the back of the hand to the inner leg. Extend that left arm up, reaching, opening into the body for three, for two. And one, inhale the left arm all the way overhead. And as we exhale, bring that left hand down to meet right. Inhale, both arms together all the way back up. And as we exhale, bend the right knee, warrior lunge. Cartwheeling both hands down either side of the right foot, coming on to the ball of the left. Left knee on or off the ground. We're going to inhale both arms out, reaching up, palms together. And as we exhale, hands to heart, sinking into the hips. Resting the left knee to the ground, opening those arms into our cactus. We're going to inhale, straighten the right leg, draw the toes toward the face, touch the fingertips down. And again, just pausing here, sending that weight back toward the left heel, drawing those right toes toward the knee. And again, if it's too much in the hamstring, keep that knee soft, but we can still work into the lower leg. We can still work that heart space and that spine length. If it feels good, we might fold a little bit deeper. Relax the head, relax the neck. Pausing here for three. For two. And one, gently walking those hands to the front of the mat. Into our lunge, we're going to open those arms into cactus. Sending the hips to the ground, drawing the belly in. No pressure in that lower back for three. For two. And one, we're going to frame the right foot. Coming off the left knee, this time we're going to step the right foot back to meet left, lift the hips, walk it out nice and easy in our downward dog. No sudden movements, just nice and easy. Maybe you're rocking the head a little bit side to side, rocking the hips a little bit side to side. Take it any little variation that feels good for your body this morning. 
We're going to come to stillness in our downward dog gently. Release the knees to the ground and tuck the toes. And then walk those hands back toward the knees until we're sitting all the way back up onto the heels. And like we did on Tuesday, we're going to go similar to the wall. So I'm going to invite you to find a clear space at the wall. We're going to bring our mat perpendicular to the wall so that the shorter end is against the wall. So again, find your space. For our final pose this morning, we're going to make our way nice and close to the wall, about two fists away from it. Coming back onto the forearms, we're going to use the forearms and elbows so that we can scoot our way so that we are now perpendicular to the wall and we're going to get nice and close to the wall and then rest those legs up. So as close as we can, but make sure that lower back is firmly supported by the ground. Drawing those toes toward the face. And again, just shaking the legs out here a little bit. <sighs> Lovely. And we can stay here. We can come into figure four. Or I'm going to invite you just to get a wee bit of hip space this morning, if you wish. We're going to bring those feet as wide away from each other as we can possibly go. Allow the feet drop out. So again, allow the wall to take the full weight of those legs, of those feet. And we can rest the hands on the inner thighs just to bring a little consciousness. So we're not pulling the hips open, but just to bring a little bit of inner consciousness to where we're feeling that release. Relax the shoulders, see if we can walk those shoulder blades together. Fall length of the spine, connect it to the ground. Maybe gently tuck the chin to release into the back of the neck. Closing down the eyes and just listening to the body. Notice if we're still holding tension in those ankles and feet, just really allow them to relax. I'm going to invite you to bring a little bit of extra consciousness to the breath. So we can rest the right hand softly on the belly, left hand on the chest. As we inhale, see if we can draw that breath deep into the belly. Feel that right hand rise. Feel the ribcage open. Feel the chest lift. And as you exhale, just sigh it out, melting the body into the ground. And just a little bit of extra consciousness to the breath here. As we just allow those hips, those legs relax. So this is a lovely restorative pose, particularly if you have had a long day on the feet. Just turning it upside down. So a lovely, easier form of an inversion. So it's like a little reset for the body. Likewise, it's a nice way to start the day. Bring in a little spring into our step. Relax the shoulders, noticing if we're bunching into the chest. Softening a little bit more with each exhale, not forcing it. And again, we could stay here a lot longer, but unfortunately, <laughs> we have to go about our day. So again, if you do have time, you can stay here a little bit longer. Otherwise, we're going to get both hands and we're going to place them to the outside of the thighs and slightly internally rotate. So bringing those knees toward each other just to take the pressure off the hips. And then using the hands, we're going to bring those feet back together. You can keep the knees soft here. And again, we can shake it out, whatever feels good. We're going to use the elbows and the upper arms to scoot our way away from the wall, just so we've got a little bit of space for coming out. And then hug those knees into the chest, give them a nice little squeeze. And then we're going to rest the feet down to the ground. Slowly rolling over onto our right hand side. And just take a moment here to allow the body, the breath, the mind reconnect, reset. And when you're ready, we're going to press that left hand into the ground to slowly draw ourselves all the way up the seat. Take those up last, nice and easy. And we're going to find ourselves in any comfortable seat that feels good for your body this morning. We're going to finish just like we started. So get nice and tall in the spine, nice and open in the heart, strong in the core. Relax the breath, relax the shoulders. We'll open those palms and then inhale both arms out, reaching up. Interlock fingers, press palms to seal, and as we exhale, press the palms forward, release the breath, slide out and let it go. And we'll do that two more times. Okay. 
Gently bring the hands to heart, press the palms together, close down the eyes and just thank yourself for creating a wee bit of space in your morning to come to the mat to look after yourself, to create some lovely energy, some lovely strength and release and hopefully take that with you into the day and into the rest of the week ahead. And thank you for sharing your practice and your energy with me. Namaste.